Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. The Lord is great. He is ready to be praised. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. Come in the room. It is time for us to magnify the Lord because he is powerful and mighty and he continues to bless us every step of the way. Good morning, all of you. Come in the room. Greet me as you come in the room. Let me know that you are here. Good morning to all of you that are coming in the room. Here we go again. Good morning to all of you coming in the room. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. My, my, my. Come in the room. Come in the room. Come on in the room. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. Come in the room. Let me know that you are here. You plan to be a participator in the word of God. Listen, when the phone rings that early in the morning, <laughs> I, I answer it because I'm not really sure what's going on. But here we go again. School is closed for some reason. Somebody let me know why school is closed this morning in my school district. Good morning to you, Sister Donna. Sister Cynthia, good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to all of you. I'm not going to tell my daughter. I'm going to let her get up anyway. <laughs> is that wrong? I'm going to let her get up anyway and get dressed. Consistency is powerful, isn't it? Uh, consistency is powerful. Let you get ready. Glory to God. Come on. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Good morning to you, Sister Linda. Good morning to you, Sister <laughs> Sister Jean. Good morning to you, cousin. Come on in the room. I see you. Good morning to you, Sister Yolanda. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Good morning to you, Sister Barbara. It's so good to see all of you that are coming in. Glory to God. The Lord is great. He's powerful and he's mighty. Yes, he is. Good morning to all of you. Glory to God. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, oh God, for you are a healer. Lord God, we bless you because you woke us up this morning, and we, God, you gave us a reason to praise you. We gave us a reason, God, to give, us, uh, give you your name praise, oh God. And Lord God, when we think about the things in the world that's going on, Lord, we recognize that without you, God, we would be nothing. Without you, God, we would be powerless, God, to even open our eyes in the morning. Without you, oh God, we'd be powerless, God, to open our mouths and allow the sound to come out that we would have an impact in the world. Lord God, we thank you just for being who you are. For you, God, gave us Jesus Christ to give us a, um, a right to the tree of life, oh God. You gave us Jesus Christ to heal us, yes, yes, and to forgive us of all the things that we have done. Lord God, we thank you for the compassion and the brand new mercies that you give us each day. But today is no different. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us those brand new compassions and brand new mercies, oh Lord God, that we're able to withstand with the, uh, the attacks of the enemy. Anything the enemy tries to do, oh God, we can withstand that this morning. Oh yeah, and we thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to bless us, God, throughout this day, how we, you're going to walk with us, oh Lord God, and how, God, as we're walking, you're going to talk with us, oh Lord God, and you're going to help us, Lord God, know, God, the strategies to move around, yes, the enemy, my God, God, we thank you for what you're going to do right now in the lives of your people. We bless you for this word that shall go forth. And I thank you, God, even for uh, for pouring into the woman of God, that she may God pour into the people of God, that they may be healed, that they may be delivered. But most of all, Lord God, that they may be the new creatures that you created them to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen. Good morning to all of you that are joining. Good morning to your niece, Rachel. Good morning to you, Jacquees. Good morning to you, Sister Donna, Sister Elizabeth, all the way from Africa. Good morning to you. Or good afternoon to you. You, I would say. Good morning to you, Sister Terry. Sister Phyllis, good morning to you. God bless you. God bless all of you that are joining uh, this morning for meditation. Good morning to you, Sister Gloria. Listen, this meditation is, uh, good morning to you, Dr. Evelyn. This meditation um, was prompted, good morning to you, Sister Sherry, was prompted. Um, I had um, gone to a meeting, but I had gone to dinner with um, over someone's house on uh, yesterday. And it wasn't, I didn't know there was going to be dinner, but I was going for a meeting. Good morning to you, Sister Karen. I was going for a meeting and um, the, um, the, the host's um, husband had prepared a meal. And I mean, he prepared a meal. He prepared some greens and some, um, some uh, fried cornbread. And we had tomatoes, seasoned tomatoes and uh, uh, sweet potato casserole. And uh, there was a ham and, uh, oh my goodness, it was just a, uh, some corn on the cob. It was just sweet corn. Uh, that he had, oh my God, and I'm telling you, it was just a meal, a meal that I was just like, man, this is Thanksgiving, I was feeling special, people of God, and so as I thought about that meal, I was thinking about, man, I was feeling guilty kind of for, for you know, not having prepared um, a meal at home, and so I called my husband, I said, honey, you want to, 
you hungry? Are you hungry? And he said, yeah, I'm hungry. I said, well, you want to come over and eat? And he right, you're right away texting me back, you know, yeah, where, where, um, where are you? Where are you? He was coming right away. And this, you, so you see what I did, people of God. You see what I did there? I invited somebody else. My God, they prepared the table for me. I mean, I mean, they had laid it out. We had drink and we had all kinds of things and it was hot. And, and I just looked at, I said, uh-uh, I want my husband to enjoy this with me. And I invited my husband over to the house to come and have a meal with me. And then I asked the, the, my host, I said, do you have enough for one more? Glory to God. Do you have enough for one more? And they just busted out laughing, you know, because you know, how am I going to just invite somebody else to the table that they prepared for me? They prepared the table for me, but yet I'm going to invite somebody else. People of God, isn't that something? Do y'all do that? Y'all don't do that, do y'all? <laughs> I just felt like, my God, <laughs> Zenora, I'm thoughtful. I was thoughtful, but I invited my husband to the table that had been prepared for me. And as I thought about what I had done, it, it, it blessed my soul because I'm telling you, we sat there. We had a great time with that couple. Yeah, come on. <laughs> hey, come on in here, somebody. Uh, with that couple, we had a great time. And, and I took care of the business. We ate. We had a great meal. I took care of the business that I went to do there to take care of. And my husband and the the um, my, my friend's uh, husband had a great time together. And it was just a wonderful time of fellowship. But then I thought about something else, and uh, and it's always good, people of God, to fellowship, to fellowship with one another. I know we, in this time of pandemic, and we think that we can't come together and socialize, but I bet if I go to the mall, I'm going to see you out there. If I go, come on, if I go somewhere, if I go to the club, I bet I'm going to see you out there. If I go other places, I believe I'm going to see you out there as well. You're going to be in the grocery store. You're going to be shopping. You're going to be everywhere where people are, but my God, we ought to be somewhere that's going to be productive in our lives. Come on in here, somebody. And so uh, we need we need to stop forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Come on, put your mask on if you need to, but you need to be around some people, some people that can pour into your life and can help to lift you up. My God, but I'm talking about I'm talking about the table that was prepared for me. I invited somebody else, and as I thought about that, I thought about this book I just purchased. The book is by um, Pastor Louis Giglio, and I'm I haven't read the book yet, but I, it's um. I believe I'm going to do a Bible study on the book, and I'm going to invite you all to this study because even as I thought about what I had done, I know sometimes we do the same thing. And the, the book, the title is something about don't invite the enemy to your table. Don't invite the enemy to your table. And as I look at that, inviting the enemy to your table, um, the Bible says in Psalms 23, verse number five, you prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Um, mama, how many times, my God, do we know that the Lord has had a table prepared for us? The Lord has had things laid out for us. Come on, he's, he lays them out just like the greens and the cornbread and the sweet potato casserole and the, come on, in the, in the corn on the cob. He, he lays the things out for us and we see that thing to be good. But we sometimes we see that thing to be so good, we begin to make mistakes and we begin, my God, to, to get complacent about what God has done. We allow the enemy to creep in. As a matter of fact, we invite him to our table and then we, we create a cycle then that leads to destructive thinking. And not only we allow him to sit at our table, as I said yesterday, man, come on, come on, Sister Rachel, you said it. Everybody can't eat at your table. Glory to God. Because then they begin to share information and ideas and, and their insights that may not be in line with the word of God. Come on here, somebody. You can't, the Bible says you can't give the enemy a seat at your table. The, the table that the Lord has prepared for you is a table that God has for you. He prepares a table for you. The Bible says, my head runneth over. Come on, you anoint my head with oil. Why are we talking about that? We're talking about that because you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And when he prepares that table for you, that means you can sit down and you can eat there. But my God, the enemy has no place there. And sometimes when the enemy, listen, like I did yesterday, we came and we, listen, Rachel, we came, we made ourselves at home. When I invited my husband there to the house with the, come on, the table that had been prepared for me. Come on here, somebody. He came and he made himself at home. He took off his hat. He took off his coat. Glory to God. He had a seat. He, look, he got him some water. He sat down and made himself at home. And to people of God, that's what happens when we invite or allow the enemy to come into our life. Sometimes we get overcome. Come on, by the enemy. We we invite him in. Maybe you just you just invite him in by the lie that you told. You come on, y'all thought I was talking about my husband. I wasn't talking about my husband. Y'all invite him in by the lie that you told. Good 
Good morning to you, Sister Karen. Sister Lana, good morning to you. You invite him in, my God, by the thing that you said about somebody, by the backbiting spirit that was on you. You, you. you invite him in. Come on, by the things that you say that you know, my God. Come on in here, somebody. You invite him in by the things that you know that they're saying and thinking that you know that it's not right. But you invite them in anyway because they look good. You invite them in anyway, maybe because you're sorry for them. But only the reason that you're sorry for them is because they got a manipulative spirit on you. Glory to God. And listen, you, it, it, Satan, come on, it's easy for Satan to manipulate his way into your life. It's easy for him to manipulate your way, his way into, my God, your, the seat, the table that God intended only for you, only for you. Glory to God. Listen, and I had the nerve to say, <laughs> is there enough for somebody else? My God, when God prepares a table for you, my God, that is for you. When God prepares the feast and the blessings for you, that is for you. Don't try to make the enemy at home where God, come on, has already set something out for you. That's right, Sister Rachel, you said it. Who right now is sitting at your table who's causing you to be insecure? Who is sitting at your table right now that's causing shame to come up on you? Who is sitting at your table? right now that's causing you to have low self-esteem who is sitting at your table right now that's causing you not to live the abundant life come on and hear somebody that God wants for you to live who is sitting at your table right now that's keep keeping you from praying and keeping oh my god yeah they sit at your table and then even though you want to come on say grace over your food because you've done that since you was a child up uh, my god when they sit at your table glory to God you don't say grace because you know that they are not the oh come on and hear somebody. You know that they are not into God like that. Glory to God. You better stand on what you believe. You better open your mouth, my God, and say grace anyway at the table that God has prepared for you, at the place that God has prepared for you because the enemy, my God, will try to come in. But what you got to do is be one. Glory to God. Oh, Judas? Yeah. The one to overcome the enemy so that you can have peace, that you can have rest, that you can have prosperity, and that you can have uh, security in the Lord, and no matter what the situation is, you've got to know for yourself who is sitting at the table that God has, glory to God, prepared for you. Because God has, just like with my friends on yesterday, they prepared a feast, people of God. They prepared a mighty feast. Come on and hear somebody. And God has set out a banquet. He's given a banquet for you. And I mean, the banquet is to carry you to the purpose through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on and hear somebody. If you're in the valley of the shadow of death, that means that Satan is all around you, trying to get you, trying to nitpick at you. Oh, he's there. My God, you just got to recognize him and don't invite him to the table that God has prepared for you. Because Satan, oh, come on here, somebody. I, the Julio Giglio said it. He said, Satan is looking for an invitation. He's looking for an invitation. Bible says he's while he's roaming around seeking whom he can devour. He is looking for an invitation to be seated at your table. Oh yeah, you've been doing well. You've been doing good. Come on here, somebody. Listen, through the pandemic, there are many have gone away by the wayside. Many, my God, have, have, have gone down, you know, in bankruptcy. Come on here, somebody. Not just uh, financial bankruptcy, but spiritual bankruptcy, emotional bankruptcy as well. But you are not that. That is not your story. Even through this time of pandemic, my God, the blood has been over your doorpost. Come on, the, the, the plague did not uh, come nigh your dwelling glory to God and you have been blessed throughout this situation you have been blessed my God to perhaps even though you may have lost your job it was just an opportunity my God for you to see the creativity that God had given into you to become an entrepreneur to start building something that you had thought about a long time ago my God it was an opportunity for you to put resources into your hands that you've never had before but you would have never thought about it had you not been going through this uh, pandemic but my God but Satan my God is looking come on to distract you. He wants to distract your mind. Glory to God. Who do you got sitting at your table? He wants to put fear in your mind. Glory to God. That's right, Sister uh, Jeanette. You got to inspect those that are close to you. And how do we expect them? Come on, we're not judging but of ourselves. But we judge by the word of God. What kind of fruit, my God, are they bearing? Are they bearing the fruit of love? And are they bearing the fruit of peace? And are they bearing the fruit of goodness? Are they bearing, my God, the fruit of integrity, my God? If they're not 
bearing that fruit, my God. They don't need a seat at your table. As a matter of fact, come on here, somebody. As a matter of fact, when God prepares a table for you, there ought to be only one chair. Glory to God. Because what he has for you, it is for you. My God, the enemy will come to try to put temptation and doubt in your mind. And I'm telling you, it is a battle that we go through each and every day. But do not make the, the situation worse. Come on, by you inviting a uh, 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 mess in, by you inviting unhealthy thoughts in, by you inviting things in that's not good for you. Come on here, somebody. By you, come on now. Now, I had a table spread with good and healthy food and wholesome food. Now, what if I would have asked for a bag of potato chips? Come on here, somebody. You got to make sure that the things that are at your table are the things that are going to lead to goodness in your life. They're going to lead to health and happiness in your life. My God. So, yes, we've got to cancel, my God, the assignment that the enemy has. And first of all, you got to recognize who is sitting at my God, who is sitting at your table, who's sitting at your table. Because because right now, some of us are in a cycle. We are in a cycle of destructive thinking. And it's simply because we've allowed the enemy to come to sit down at our table. So we have got to get to the place where we recapture our thoughts, bringing those thoughts, my God, subject to the word of God, pulling down every stronghold in our mind. My God, but you can pull, you can't pull them down. If the devil, if the enemy, my God, is sitting at your table, if he's eating with you, if he's having conversation with you, my God, you can come on, get freedom. You can get free from him. My God, if you are allow Jesus, my God, in your life to lead you through what, my God, what you need to be leading through. Glory to God. Allow him to lead you through, my God, because you can't give the enemy. I hear you. I hear you, brother uh, Dulio. You can't give the enemy a seat, my God, at your table. David recognized that. And David, my God, recognized, glory to God, that he had gone through some situations. And he recognized, my God, that, listen, he had killed Goliath. And uh, when he was a young boy, he recognized recognize that he had the strength. He was able, my God, to kill a lion and a bear. The Bible says with his bare hands, he recognized that. And listen, David, listen, he, 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 he wanted he want just to settle down. He wanted to take it easy. Glory to God. But listen, even when you start trying to take it easy, here come my God, the enemy, putting temptations in your mind. Look at what happened with David and Bathsheba. Come on, glory to God. All David wanted to do was have a beautiful wife, woman with him. Come on in here. But, but the enemy crept in. He allowed the enemy to sit at his table. And when he allowed the enemy to sit down at his table, the enemy began to talk with him, have conversations. Y'all know at any point in time, David could have changed his mind at any point in time. My God, David could have said, this is wrong. But listen, because the enemy was constantly in his mind, David, woman, he conceived a thing and then he carried it through. My God, he did that thing. And then listen, David, listen, the Bible says he was a man after God his own heart. Glory to God. He was one who was equipped to repent of the things that he had done. But my God, people of God, just like David, we allow a thing of a negative situation, a negative circumstance to be planted in our mind. And instead of us leaning on God and, 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 and looking to God to take care of that situation, we allow the enemy to sit there with us and we maul that thing over in our mind. And pretty soon we have concocted something that will lead us to destruction. Glory Glory to God is simply because we've allowed him a seat at the table that God has prepared for us. My God, listen, David, God sent him through a lot of things before he got to the point of Bathsheba. God delivered him through a lot of things, anointed him as king already. Glory to God brought him through the valley of the shadow of death. But then sometimes again, we get, we get complacent. Sometimes we get, ah, uh, we, we just, we, sometimes we just think we, we just want to, we just want to ride it easy. But my God, the enemy is always looking for an invitation to sit down with you, to mess up what God has done in your life, people of God. And you can't allow that. So instead of, my God, allowing the enemy to sit at your table, sitting down, talking with him, letting him help you concoct some crazy scheme, my God, of, 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 of like David, of getting somebody else's wife that ended in murder. Glory to God. Why don't you spend more time with God? Why don't you sit at, sit at his table, my God, that he prepared for you. 
Spend some time, my God, with God in prayer. Spend some time with God reading his word. My God, allow God to be at the table that he prepared for you. Because I'm telling you, if God prepared the table for you, glory to God, he's sitting there with you. Oh yeah, he's there. He don't need a seat, but he's sitting there, my God. And you know, many times God prepares a table, my God, before us in the presence of our enemies, but sometimes we're too afraid to eat there. We, we're too afraid. My God, sometimes we, we know there are many trials and, and tribulations and we see the enemy around and, and we get afraid of them. We get afraid of what they might say and we get afraid of what they might do. But just like with David, if you can look as though, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, I can recognize, my God, that not only has he done something for me, but he will continue to bless. He will continue to heal. And you don't have to worry and you don't have to have any fear about what the enemy might do about what those that might do that may say something about you. My husband said the other day, when something, if something is said about somebody, he said, the people only will talk about it for two weeks. If you can endure for two weeks because they're on to the next situation, we don't have to fear my God about what people might say. We just got to have faith in God that he's going to work a situation out on my behalf. Sometimes, you know, we, we think that when we take a stand even on our job that we're going to get fired. Listen, we don't got to, we don't got to have, be fearful about those things. We don't got to give in to the things that are happening, my God, in our life. We know it's not a right situation. Glory to God. God is in control of what's happening with your boss. God is control of what's happening, my God, in your home. God is the one that's in control. And sometimes we think the enemy is in control. And the reason that we think the enemy is in control is because we have offered him a seat, my God, in our table, at our table. We have offered him a seat there. But you got to recognize, my God, that even if there's something that's illness that's going on with you. God, listen, the enemy can't heal you. The enemy can't comfort you, my God. The enemy can't regulate your blood pressure. Come on, the enemy can't make, my, my God, make your heart beat like on time and in tune like it ought to beat. Only God, my God, can heal you. Only God, my God, can make things right for you. Glory to God. And sometimes we put too much stock in what other people, my God, think or what they want to do. And my God, we put, allow them to have too much control over us. Glory to God. When we recognize that God prepared that table for me. You don't have no authority or right or business, devil, to be sitting at the table that God prepared for me because it's a table of blessings. It's a table of health and healing. It is not a table of fear. It is not a table of lack. Glory to God because my God, when God prepared that table, he had me and only me in mind. When he prepared that table, he recognized that I may have been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He recognized that I may have had some fear, but he said to me, son and daughter, do not fear because I am with you. As a matter of fact, I'm walking with you all the way through this. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm turning my, listen, your worst days into your best days. He says, I'm going to allow you to sit down and feast. And when you feast, you can feast on my grace and on my mercy. The enemy can't do that. Glory to God. He said, I didn't prepare grace and mercy for the enemy. All I prepared for the enemy was destruction and death and hell. Come on in here, somebody. I didn't prepare for the enemy that they would have com a comfort and communion union with me. I didn't prepare that for the enemy. So do not invite glory, my, my God. Do not invite, my God, the enemy to the table that I prepared for you. My God, because he arranged for you that you would have, my God, see his glory. He said, I didn't prepare, my God, for the enemy to see my glory. Glory to God. Sometimes we, Lord, like I did, I wanted my husband to experience the thing that I had experienced. Glory to God. But sometimes we don't understand when we invite, my God, guests, come on, into our home. We don't know who we're inviting. We don't know, my God, what they've been going through. We don't know, my God, what their motives is. Come on in here, somebody. But the Lord, the Bible says, uh, as he moves us through this life, as he moves us through the places that we are going, he takes the time, my God, to anoint our heads. Uh, come on, anoint our head with oil. Glory to God. He's not anointing the enemy, people of God. You can't have the enemy at your table because he will not be anointed, my God. Well, I want you to know this morning that when the Lord prepares a table for you, he does it just for you because there he says, here at the table my God, I want to remind you of my blessings. I want to remind you of my goodness. I want to remind you of my grace. Glory to God. And he says I don't know, I don't care what the devil might have told you, but I want you 
you to know this morning that you, my God, uh, hey, glory to God, you are precious in my sight. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm you so precious uh, that I sent Jesus, my only and begotten son, glory to God, to die that you might be free. Glory to God. You, my God, are sitting at the table, my God, of healing. Listen, David lets us know that the blessings, my God, are so great that he said there's more than I can handle. He says, God, says, I'm, I'm, my cup is, is running over, Lord. Listen, your cup is running over. Listen, the enemy cannot partake in the blessings of God. Listen, people of God, who do you got at your table? Come on, you better analyze. Analyze, my God, who you got at your table. As a matter of fact, you got to say, you know what, I got to move this seat. You've been sitting at my table. And, and as a matter of fact, there were some things that God needed for me to do. But I, I hate to say it this morning, people of God, but I got to move this chair to another place, another location, because the things that God wanted for me to do, I've got to be able to do those things. And, and listen, maybe you don't know what God has for me, but listen, and I don't know necessarily what God has for me, but what I do know is that God wants to bless me. Oh, if I was in church, I would tell you to tell somebody that God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you, my God, to overflowing. God wants, oh yeah, he wants to bless you, my God, to y'all, my God, to oh, beyond what you can even imagine, my God. And what you got to do, my God, is just ask God, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up, oh God. Listen, we're sitting at the cup and, oh my God, my, my host at the at the house yesterday, they, they wanted to know if I wanted something else. Can, can we get you anything else? Listen, when you're at the Lord's table, the table that he prepared for you, the Lord wants to fill you up. He wants you to be filled, my God, to the brim. Come on, do you got to come to the table, Sister Rachel, with a hungry heart? Because he will fill you, my God, to overflowing. As a matter of fact, he will give you the abundance, my God. And all he's doing is looking for somebody who is willing. All he is doing, my God, is looking some, for somebody that he that wants to be healed. And my God, is that you today? Glory to God. God allows us, glory to God, to go through the valleys. And he allows us, Sister Rachel, to go through the, the shadow of death. Come on. So we will not fear evil. So my God, whoever is sitting at your table, if they are not in tune with God, if they're not in tune with the place and the position that God, my God, has for you, I'm telling you, it's time for them to go. Move the chair. Get the chair away from your table, my God, so that you can, you and you alone, my God, can uh, come and die on, can, my God, appreciate what God has prepared for you. I'm not talking about being selfish, but the Bible says he prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He didn't tell me to let my enemies sit down. He didn't tell me to invite my enemy there because he recognized, my God, when the enemy comes in, he comes in, my God, like a flood, but he also knew, my God, I got to recognize that the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against the enemy, my God, will lift him up. We've got to come to God and turn to God, my God, for strength. We've got to turn to God, my God, and trust him, my God, for he is the only one, my God, who can bring us out. He's the only one. As a matter of fact, we look at Psalms 23. He's the only one, my God, that can bring us through. Glory to God. His table, he prepared that table. Glory to God. And listen, nobody else prepares it. And he is the one who determines who sits at it. Nobody else. So do not, people of God, invite anybody. Don't invite the enemy. Don't invite the enemy, my God, who would try to distract you. Don't invite the enemy, my God, who would try to discourage you. Don't invite the enemy who would try to frustrate the move of God in your life. Don't invite the enemy. Don't give him a seat. Oh, yeah, Brother Julio said it. Don't give him a seat at your table. Because that table, my God, is for you. It's for you to have peace. It's for you to have rest. It's for you to be able to take authority over the thoughts that the enemy is trying to put in your life. It's for you, my God, to break free. It's for you, my God, to know who you are. It's for you, my God, to overcome, my God, the things that the enemy are trying to do. It's for you. And the Lord, my God, prepare that table for you. Don't invite the enemy. Don't invite the enemy. Father God, we bless your name. We praise you, O oh God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us a discerning spirit that we would know, Lord God, who it is that we are to be connected with. But Lord God, when you bring us through situations, we know it's time. We, we feel like we need to rest, O oh God. But Lord God, help us to know that when you prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies, O oh Lord God, that that table, it is for us. And Lord God, let us not begin to and continue, God, to invite the enemy who steals our strength, who, who saps our anointing, O oh God. 
Let us not continue to invite the enemy who tries to disrupt our minds and frustrate the thing that God that you have for in our, for in, our uh, in our lives. Lord God, yes, we thank you that yes, even though God sometimes we may have to sit alone. We thank you that even alone, God, is not alone because you have never left us, nor have you forsaken us, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that even thing, even the things, God, that we don't know, you know all about them. Help us, Lord God, to continue to walk in the way that you have for us. And Lord God, let us learn from you as we are sitting at the table, oh God. Give the men and women of God, yes, the compassion and the understanding that they need to know, God, how you have been compassionate to us. And we thank you, Lord God, that yes, yes, anything that we do, Lord, we will seek you first in in all of our ways. And when we do that, Lord God, you will direct us to victory. You will direct us, God, out of the situations that harm us. Lord, thank you so much for this word. Thank you for engrafting this word to the hearts of the people that they may be changed. Thank you for helping them, Lord God, to recognize there's some situations right now that are in their lives, oh Lord God, that need to be fixed. Help them, God, with your help, Lord God. We know, my God, that you can fix them. You can turn the situation around. Lord God, you can remove the seats that are at the table that you prepared for them. Lord God, that they may be able to take advantage, that they may be able to experience the greatness that you, my God, have created for them. Experience the greatness, God. Experience the, the, the true uh, uh, purpose, God, that you have given to them. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, yes, that there is no, no weapon that's formed against the people of God that shall prosper. We thank you, Lord God. We take back our minds. We take back our intellect. We take back our peace. My God, we take back the banquet that you've given to us, you prepared for us. We take back your grace. We have take back the mercy, God. Well, Leo, no, the enemy cannot have it. He cannot share, my God, in this feast that you prepared for us. We thank you, Lord, for preparing a feast that we may be able to, to face every challenge, but not only face every challenge, Lord, but overcome it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and we bless you, God. Amen and bless the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, I see you, people of God. You're right. Everybody is not welcome at your table. My God. Listen, sometimes you, you, in the olden days, mom used to say, you can't eat at everybody's house. Glory to God. But listen, but you can't invite everybody to your house. I'm not talking about your, your physical house. I'm talking about your spiritual house. You can't invite everybody to your spiritual house. Glory to God. You can't do it. Hallelujah. You cannot do it. Let us be discerning of those things. And the table that the Lord has prepared for us, the table that, of, of bounty, the table of goodness, the table of grace. Come on in here, somebody. Let us take advantage of that feast that he has for us, that we will walk out the life that God created for us. What's the life? It is that abundant life. Hey, happy birthday, Sister Phyllis. That abundant life that he has for us. I love you with the love of Jesus. You share this word with somebody because I believe, my God, that somewhere in the world, somewhere in the earth realm, somewhere in this community, in your communities that you're living in, that right now, my God, you, there's a feast going on. And my God, the enemy is sitting at the table, but you've got to, you've got to expel him from the feast that you may have the abundant life that God created for you. I love you with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.